Hello everybody, welcome to a new year, 2023. I hope you had a really fantastic Christmas, very enjoyable new year. I had like my fam you know, family gatherings during the Christmas time. No presents to me. <laughs> I know, I've been, a, I've been a bad boy apparently. Nah, just kidding. I bought some things for myself. I mean, most of the, most of the money went to presents to the nephews and that sort of thing. And during the new year, I, we mostly had a small dinner gathering with my brothers, mom and nephews and that sort of thing. Other than that, nothing special. I didn't uh, stay awake until uh, midnight because I had work the day after, so I have to get up early. But it was a nice day. And uh, finally, 2023, I, I'm I, I, I feeling good. I, I have a good feelings about this year. I, not like 2022, which was a terrible year. Like a really, one of the most... Kind of like, I wouldn't say it was a part as, how should I say it? I wouldn't say it, it was as bad as 2020, for example, which was a terrible year. <laughs> for a lot of reasons. I mean, there were so many things that happened that year that was just shit. And we all know one big thing. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, I'm finally cured from that goddamn corona. But it wasn't the new version that is apparently spreading right now like crazy and oh <laughs> oh and apparently not even the vaccine shot can protect you from this version like oh my god damn why can't we find some sort of way to just f find a virus that kill viruses like oh my god i'm <sighs> yes we're gonna live with this right now <laughs> fuck i hate corona but anyway, we're not gonna start with that. I mean, it's just it's just influenza, the RS virus, I think you call it, and now the Corona again, a new version is spreading. So just buckle up. It's gonna be like this now for a f <laughs> how many years? I don't know, but we shall see. But today I want to talk a little bit about a very big. <laughs> I wouldn't say a trend, but. There's a lot of pop-out uh, articles, videos, uh, debates, and then of course you have that stupid Twitter thing. We're gonna speak speak a little bit more about it, but also from influencers about Hogwarts Legacy and why. So apparently, Hogwarts Legacy is yet again in the news. Uh, we are for a very good reasons. I mean, we are around five weeks away from the release. The 10th, the 10th of February, well, um, I think it's more like four weeks, maybe, for those who have uh, pre-ordered the game, like me. I'm going to get it on the 7th, I think. I think it's either 7th or the 8th of February, because we, we get the 72 hours uh, early access. So, as we creep closer to the release date, there has been a lot of pop-outs about articles. Uh, Articles, videos, tweeted, tweeted tweets, and oh, videos. I probably already mentioned that, but about people who really trying to boycott, like screaming to boycott this game, like for for <laughs> for the reasons that are just unfathomable. I think you call that, and just unjustable, and just pure out freaking insanity. And to be honest, it doesn't affect me. I'm still thinking this game is going to be... It's, I mean, it's already been claimed to be the most anticipated game of 2023. And it's already... Pre the pre-orders have skyrocketed, apparently, in the st uh, so far we heard. Honestly, it's good, because I feel like this game is going to be amazing. I am lowering my bar. I mean, I do know, I do anticipate there's going to be bugs, glitches crashes other sort of things that need to be fixed but i i am prepared for that and i'm also preparing myself maybe the story is not as how to say epic compared to many other video games that i've been playing throughout my life like mass effect series the dragon age origin or uh, the G gta san andreas you know that sort of thing but i do feel like this is going to be a game that's going to be but I do feel this game is going to be stick on the tongue for a lot of people for a long time. I mean, probably all the way all the way to the summer when we're going to get 
new games, I think. I mean, this year we are going to get a lot of games. Like, finally we're going to get Starfield. Like, I, I'm i not massively hyped for that game, I'm, but I do look forward to it. It's been such a long time since we had a Bethesda game. And I'm, pro I'm talking about the proper Bethesda game, like like Skyrim or Fallout. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm so... No more MMO, please. Like, I, I'm sick of that. I don't care about The Elder Scrolls Online, even though it's a good game. I don't care about Fallout 76, which was just pure garbage. We are going to get Diablo, f I think it's 4, right? I'm not massively looking forward to that, but I am curious about it. I mean, I played the last one, probably a year or something like that. Something like that. I'm. It's not my kind of game, but I'm, st but I'm still, look, in a way, is looking forward to it. We're also going to get the new Stalker game, which I'm looking so forward to. It looks so good. Yes, finally, something from good times. I love the old Stalker games. We're also going to have uh, the new uh, Legend of Zelda. I, it's not really my... I, I have played Zelda since long time, since all, all the way to the early 2000s, so that sort of thing. But it's not really my kind of interest, if I have to put it like that. We're also going to get, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, Skull and Bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, not going to talk about that. Maybe in 10 years, maybe you will get a review. And we're also going to get uh, The Sons of Force, which is a sequel. No, wait. I think it's a sequel to The Forest. I really like that game. I mean, that's pretty much the game that started um, the trend of uh, survival games. <laughs> if uh, well, to be honest, it did. Even though it wasn't a revolu revolutionary on its own, but it did pretty much start a trend with uh, the whole open world survival game. And it looks to be pretty good. Like uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm, I do think it's going to be a good game. We're also going to get the, the new Star Wars uh, Jedi Survivor, I think it was called. Honestly, I'm as I have as I have said about Star Wars, I, I don't care about it anymore. Like, I just don't care about Star Wars. That's the sad thing about it. It's, it's because of Disney. I, you fucked up. I'm sorry. You can't uh, hook me anymore on Star Wars. You need to do some really fucking pro proper Jedi game or something like that. I'm going to wait for the proper reviews for that game. If they say that it's going, it's a really good game on, well, let me refrain that. If it's on par with something like KOTOR, for example, with, or SWOTOR, the Star Wars the, the Old Public uh, Online game, which I'm some time to time do go into because it's such a good fucking game. Story-wise, character, gameplay, and I have some very fond memories with that game. I, I do. I mean, 2011, something around there, around there when it came out, I had huge amounts of fun with with my friends playing that game. We're also going to get uh, the new Assassin's Creed game, which honestly I don't care. Black Flag 2, for fuck's sake, Ubisoft. Black. Flag 2, how we, we've been screaming for such a game again. Black Flag 2, we've been screaming for it for years right now. Like, why are you ignoring us and just giving us a sense of a mirage? It looks shit. We're also going to get the new Avatar game, which looks really, like, it looks good. Like, yeah, I think it's going to be good. The only downside I have with that game is that you're only going to be able to play as Navi. You're not going to be... Playing, playing as a human, which honestly, why, why, that sucks. Another game that I am looking forward to is uh, the World of the World Worlds game. It's an indie game made by an indie, indie developer, which were on four people, I think, something like that, and it looks fantastic. I cannot wait for that game. I, it's kind of like my second most anticipated game for this year if it comes out this year and as i said we have starfield and that sort of thing it looks good like the 2023 looks like a good year for video gaming i, I have a i have a good feelings about it then we have movies and tv series and sort of thing. on the tv series side i don't see a lot of massively interesting things to watch 
movie wise also like it looks very dry this year the only movie so far that i am very looking forward to is oppenheimer other than that like nothing like there's nothing on the table basically maybe for anime and that sort of thing it looks better but other than that other than that nothing but as i said we are going to talk a little bit about hogwarts legacy why has it all of a sudden been for very obvious reason it is close as i said we are around four or five weeks away and it looks fantastic if you haven't watched the uh the gameplay part one or two i mean it looks fantastic it looks oh my god i mean i have i oh, i want it i want it ah it's like ah oh, for fuck's sake it's just a couple of weeks away but still, ah, oh, I'm so glad that I have saved my entire vacation for this. I still have like four weeks of vacation to take up. I'm going to take two weeks of vacation to play the game only. Nothing is going to get in my way for that. And uh, then I'm going to save a couple of days till next, uh, in, until the vacation times and that sort of thing resets in April. So we are going to talk a little bit about the controversy, I am uh, air quoting. So if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, I'm reading this from an article, you are a fascist, you are a Nazi, you are a sexist, you are transphobic, and the list continues. I want to point out, point out something. I have Jewish blood, not strong one I can say, my great grandmother was Jewish, she fled the Holocaust. She managed to get from Hungary to, to Sweden. She was one of the very few who, go, who was very fortunately to manage to get to Sweden during the whole debacle, if you want to call it like that. So I don't have massive Jewish sentiments, that sort of thing. I don't feel too much about the Jewish religion and that sort of thing. But to call it anti-Semitic. So why are they calling it anti-Semitic? Well, this problem has been around since the 90s. So apparently the reason why it's anti-Semitic, it, it, it is because the, what do you call it now? Uh, the depiction of the goblins are very, how should you say it? Stereotypical Jewish propaganda wise looking. I mean, if you look it up, like especially from the, the 1930s, and you can find like characters, satires, version of use, that sort of thing. And they look very goblin-like. And also because the goblins in the Harry Potter world are bankers, which stereotypically <laughs> uh, people are pointing out to be Jews. Uh, <laughs> As I said, this problem has been around ever since the 90s. Like, what the fuck is that sort of argument? I have Jewish friends who love the Harry Potter world. Harry Potter world. They love it. We have, we grew up on it, for fuck's sake. They have no fucking problem w with anything about that world. It is such a fucking dumb argument. And also goblins, if you say that is anti-Semitic, what the fuck have you been reading? What the fuck are you educational level right now? You must have some sort of NA education. <laughs> Sorry, Americans. Like, you realize goblins are from, like, Anglo-Saxon or Anglo-Norman, uh, what you call it, folklore? It's been around fucking the, this 800s. There's a lot of different versions of goblins in different uh, cultures and religions, that sort of thing. Like, like for example, in our versions of uh, goblins are called Svartalfer or uh, Dark Elves. Not like the Elder Scrolls kind of elves or that sort of thing. Dark elves or Svartalfer are pretty much like goblins. They're small, very, uh, how should you say it, irritating beings, creatures who lives, uh, like, to, like to torment and play pranks on people. And they live in a world called Svartalfelheim, which is one, is, which is one of the nine worlds in Norse mythology and that sort of thing, in pa Norse paganism, religion, that sort of thing. But also Christian uh, version of uh, goblins are more like they are small devils. So they have nothing. They don't have, have they don't have any 
thing related to the Jews or the Jewish faith or Judaism. Like nothing. Where the actual flying fuck is this argument coming from? The only reason why they are pointing this out is because they saw a satire of Jews from the 1930s, uh, most from people who were national socialists and that sort of thing. So yeah, the anti-Semitic argument is unvalidated. It's pure imagination. It's, it's really out of absolutely nothing. It has no valuable argument or points. So this whole accuse of anti-Semitic is absolutely nothing. They don't have the single freaking proof that Harry Potter or J.K. Rowling are anti-Semitic. That is unvalidated fake news. Then we have the Nazi thing and the fascist thing. Like, you people, do you know what National Socialism and Fascism is? I have very much doubt that you can even point out what this sort of ideology are. Like you cannot you just, oh, National Socialism, oh, it's Nazism, Nazi, Nazism, it, you hate Jews, you hate other people. Okay, but can you, can you explain to me what it is? Like National Socialism is a pure fucking dumb uh, idiotic ideology, absolutely. But you need to be on the fucking point right now because... I mean, calling people Nazis and fascists, you're not going to go anywhere. You're just insulting people for something that they are not. Mostly they are from the left or center who speaks like this. I don't understand. I, I, I don't. I'm first of all, I'm not. I don't lean too much on to the right. I don't lean too far to the left. I'm more like a social conservative person. I'm standing very much in the middle. So then we move on to transphobic. Like, here's the thing. I don't agree with a lot of things that JK Rowling is spewing out in her mouth. But I am a supporter to to the statement that uh, JK Rowling said about trans rights and everything. It is in intervening in female rights. Absolutely. Females have earned their fucking rights through hard labor and sweat and blood. Trans people... Just because you've done a sex change operation or just took taking a pills or that sort of thing, whatever. No, you haven't earned it. I'm sorry. So this whole thing about anti-Semitic argument is unvalidated. Just ignore it. It has nothing to support it. Absolutely nothing. The whole thing about tw- the, the Twitter influencers thing. Thank God I don't use Twitter. I never have. Just ignore them. These sort of people are uneducated, they haven't done the research, they are purely garbage. They don't know what they're saying or what they're doing. They just think that this looks good, while in reality, they are smearing shit on themselves. And the whole thing about trans rights, that sort of thing, it's up to each and every one of us to think what, uh, if to support or not support this sort of statement uh, JK put out. I'm a supporter of it. I don't think that trans people's rights are the same as female rights or male rights. But I'm still looking forward to this game. I cannot wait until we finally get it in our hands or get to play it finally. Other than that, it's nothing more else I can talk about. I mean, 2023 looks like a good year for gaming. Very dry on TV series and movies and another sort of entertainment. And it looks like we're going to face another wave of Corona or variants of it, unfortunately. And it looks like the war in Ukraine is going to mostly be in a stalemate, but there's been a lot of talk about a new counter-offensive by the Russians. We don't know yet. I mean, hopefully this fucking war is going to end soon. And also a positive thing so far, it looks like the inflation is going down and it looks like it's going to return to the normal. Hopefully it's going to stay like this. We're also moving away from the winter times and the energy prices is going to get lower and we're going to spend less and we can finally save up for the next winter. So it looks like good times ahead, at least for a while. I hope you all have a good continuing year. Hope you're going to have an enjoyable time with video games and that sort of thing. And hopefully you're staying safe and uh, treat people 
with respect and that sort of thing. Don't be like this these sort of influencer Twitterers, Twitters, that's Twitter users that are spewing out nonsense, fake news, and just insults to people like No, be Treat people like you want to be treated. That's that's how I'm seeing it. But I will say that uh, my review for Hogwarts Legacy is gonna take a while. I mean, I'm a review on Hogwarts Legacy is not going to be around for like at least maybe a month or maybe two months after the release. I can't possibly think that way. it's going to be earlier than that. So I'm just warning you that I I'm not going to put out a review on the game <laughs> a week after. No. I'm gonna take my time with the game, I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, just a heads up, it's, the review is gonna take forever to do. Anyway, see you all later.